An inmate at a Toronto detention facility is Canada's first prisoner to test positive for COVID-19. And now some provinces are releasing prisoners to mitigate the potential impact of this pandemic. Nova Scotia has granted temporary release to 41 prisoners. Newfoundland, they've done the same, 17 inmates. And Ontario says it will follow suit, but has not confirmed how many prisoners it plans to release. For more on this angle of the story, we're joined by Martha Painter. She's a registered nurse and a prison health researcher, and we should let our viewers know we're having some technical challenges. So Martha is joining us on the phone this morning. I'm glad you're with us. Thank you. Uh, we know weeks back, Iran released more than 85,000 prisoners at the beginning of its outbreak. Some U.S. states have also done this. Is this the best thing Canadian prisons can be doing to reduce the potential harm of the virus? Yes, absolutely. The number one priority is reducing the population who are incarcerated. How are prisons protecting the health of inmates who aren't being released? Honestly, there's still a lot of work being done here in Nova Scotia, for sure, to continue to work on release plans for as many people as is possible. Martha, when people, you know, Canadians hear prisoners are being released, I think some people might have a fear reaction to that. What does it actually mean? How does that live out? Well, the, the first priority uh, prisoners to be released here in Nova Scotia were those serving intermittent sentences. So those are people who are in the community from Monday to Friday and then serve their sentences on the weekends. So we, we know that they are perfectly safe in the community and um, we are protecting their health by continuing to grant them community release through seven days a week. The next priority are people who are uh, remanded. So remand is pre-trial incarceration. So these are people who have not been tried, they've not been convicted, and they've not been sentenced. It would be very unethical to hold these people in such a dangerous environment when they have not been convicted of anything yet. Martha, we started we this... Also Sorry, I just wanted Sorry. to get this last question. And we've started our interview by saying we've seen our first positive case uh, of COVID-19 yeah. in our prison system. What could happen if the proper measures are not taken now? Prisons are an incredibly dangerous environment for the spread of infectious disease. People are living in very close, close quarters. And moreover, this population are largely very unwell to begin with. So they have a lot of these underlying conditions that we hear about um, again and again, right? So because of poverty and inadequate treatment of trauma and um, other structural determinants of health, this population have a lot of mental and physical illness that they're already coping with. The P so they're more vulnerable. The PPE or the protective uh, equipment needed in hospitals, uh, you know, they're, at a, they're coming up to a shortage point. How does it look in the prison system? I, I, I'm not the best person to ask that. I work more in advocacy than within the prison system, but I, I know that the healthcare workers are, are doing their best to advocate for access. But um, this is a very high needs population, a very dangerous environment. Martha, I want to thank you for joining us this morning from Halifax. You're very welcome. Thank you for your interest. Thanks for watching. If you like this, be sure to subscribe here. And you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.